Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. Well, today we're going to understand God's Sabbath day, the day that God created the Sabbath. He actually created it on Saturday, on the seventh day. So let's look here at the Bible. And let's study the Bible, see what the Bible says and all, thy word is truth. The word of God is true. John 17, verse 17 says, Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy, thy word is truth. The word of God is true. Now, do you honor God's fourth commandment? Well, what is the fourth commandment? It says, Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. That's the fourth commandment. Let's look and see how the Sabbath was created. We're going to turn in our Bibles to Genesis chapter 2. Now before we get started, I'd like to offer you two very important booklets. The first is, What Kind of Faith is Required for Salvation? What's the most important thing in your life? is your salvation, what you're going to be doing for all eternity. It's very important. And it says here at the bottom of the booklet, it says, do you know millions who actually believe in Jesus Christ have no salvation at all because they trust in the wrong kind of faith? And the second booklet is, why do you observe Sunday? The Bible teaches the observance of the Sabbath. Which day did Christ and the apostles observe? Which day did Paul teach Gentile converts to observe? How did the day become changed? That's one of the questions we're going to answer. From the seventh to the first day of the week. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 commands us to prove all things. I ask you to please read this booklet with an open mind. If you are already right, honest investigation will but confirm it. If you are wrong, you should want to know it. Yes, you should. Well, let's look at Genesis chapter 2. And we're going... To verse 1. And here it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. So that was six days, if you read in the verse that preceded it. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And verse 1 says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God rested his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it. What does sanctify mean? Sanctify means he made it holy because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So, God rested that day. He sanctified it. He made it holy. Okay. How did that day become changed from the seventh day to the first day, Sunday. How did that happen? Well, it didn't happen in the New Testament. It happened way after the New Testament was written and finished. 
It happened in 321 AD when the Roman Emperor Constantine convened the Council of Laodicea in which he declared that Christians will no longer keep the Sabbath of the Jews but will keep the vernable day of the sun. What does vernable mean? Vernable means holy. Emperor Constantine made the first day of the week, Sunday, holy. How could he do that? He wasn't given, it didn't come from God, it didn't come from Jesus Christ, it didn't come from any of the apostles. All the apostles kept the seventh day up to 321 AD, 321 years after Christ. Now, we're going to go to Exodus chapter 20. This is the fourth commandment, and we're going to read in verse 8. Chapter 20, verse 8 says, It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why does it say remember? Because the world has forgotten the Sabbath day. The world no longer keeps the, sab the Sabbath day. Most of the world works or plays or shops on the Sabbath day on the seventh day. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six, that's how you keep it holy. You remember it, you keep it. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Did it say it was the Sabbath of the Jews? or the Sabbath of the Israelites, or the Sabbath of the uh, Hebrews? No, it is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it, you shall not do any work, new, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger. This is a a person who is outside the, outside the nation of Israel, he is someone who is a, called a Gentile that is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now you might say, well, you know, uh, I have to work on the Sabbath day. I have to work. I, in order to keep my job, I have to work. Well, I've got news for you. You may not know it, but there is a law that your uh, employer must accommodate you on the days that you keep holy. He must accommodate you. You could work on another day. In other words, you could make it up, make the hours up. He must accommodate you. That is a law. He cannot fire you for keeping the Sabbath day. That would be against the law. So, I want you to understand that. Let's go now to Matthew chapter 19. Jesus has asked a, a very important question here in Matthew chapter 19, and we're going to look in verse 16. And it says here, And behold, one came. It doesn't say a Jew. It doesn't say a Gentile. It says, 
one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Wow, that is a good question. What good thing must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus gives him the answer. And he said unto him, Why call you me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto them, which? Let's stop here for a moment. He said, which? Why did he say which? Which commandments? Which set of commandments are you talking about? Are you talking about the commandments that Moses received at Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy 5? Or are you talking about the commandments, the oral law, that is the commandments of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes? He wanted to know which commandments am I to keep. Well, let's find the answer. Jesus gives them the answer. Let's read it. He said unto him, which? Jesus said, you shall do no murder. That's one of the Ten Commandments. You shall not commit adultery. That's another one. You shall not steal. That's another one. You shall not bear false witness. That's another commandment. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. So he gave them five of the ten commandments. Five of the ten. That's the set that Jesus told him to keep. The fourth commandment is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The first commandment is you shall have no other gods before me. So uh, we shouldn't worship idols, as it says in the second commandment. We shouldn't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And that's another commandment. So Jesus didn't have to read him the whole Ten Commandments, but he told him five of the set of ten. So those are the commandments that we're to keep. Why aren't we keeping the Sabbath day? Well, there's a lot of reasons. I have a challenge for you today. I have a challenge for you. This next month, or the month following it, make sure that your calendar is clear on the Sabbath day. That's the seventh day the day that we call Saturday. Make sure it's clear, okay? And rest on that day. And go to and study your Bible. And go to a Sabbath-keeping church. You're always welcome to come to our group and we'll let you know what, where we meet and when we meet. Uh, at the end of the program. So please stay with the program and we'll, uh, we'll be happy to help you to understand that. Well, we're going to take a short break here. Please don't go away. We'll be right back.
and I have a confession to make. I have a serious crush on my workout. Hip, fun, and always a challenge. Jazzercise is the total package. It's the only workout that I've ever truly loved. Does it show? That's because I'm in the best shape of my life. What a difference Jazzercise makes. When's the last time your workout swept you off your feet? Find a class near you at jazzercise.com. Welcome back to the program. Our title today is, Do You Honor God's Fourth Commandment? In case you turn, tune in late, we're talking about the Fourth Commandment, and that Fourth Commandment reads, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why does God use the word remember? Because the world has forgotten the Sabbath day. The world doesn't keep the Sabbath day. Most of the world today, the Christian world today, keeps Sunday, the first day of the week. Now, a gentleman who was 80 years old called me up on the phone. He said, Meyer, I've been keeping Sunday for 80 years. <laughs> I thought Sunday was the Sabbath. And now I understand Saturday is the Sabbath. I'm going to keep the Sabbath. And he's kept the Sabbath ever since. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5 in verse 17. Let's look at verse 17. And it says here, Jesus Christ is speaking. And he says, think not. That means don't think that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. That's what people say. People say, Jesus Christ came away, came to do away with God's laws. And Jesus here says, don't think that, that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. You can look up that word fulfill, means fill it full. That's complete it. That's do it. For verily I say unto you, or truly I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot, one tiny note, one tiny uh, accent mark, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. I don't want to be the least in the kingdom of heaven. I don't think you want to be either. I think you want to be there, but I don't think you want to be the least. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I'd rather be great in the kingdom of heaven than be the least. Well, verse 20 says you may not even be there. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now the scribes and Pharisees were pretty strong about keeping the Sabbath. They created a lot of laws around the Sabbath. They, they put fences around each of God's laws. You can do this on the Sabbath, you can't do that. And Jesus uh, 
butted up with them on, on things that they could do and not do. Jesus said, it is lawful to heal on the Sabbath day. And Jesus told the man to pick up his bed and walk. And he carried his bed, and the, and the scribes and Pharisees said, it's not lawful for you to, to do this. And he says, well, the man who healed me told me to do it as a sign that he was healed. Now let's go to the next scripture, uh, Isaiah chapter 58. In Isaiah chapter 58, God promises to bless those people who keep his Sabbath day. Let's read it here in I, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13. Isaiah 58, verse 13 says, if, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath. That's a people putting their foot on the Sabbath day. They're not keeping it. They're trampling all over it. From doing your pleasure on my holy day. So the Sabbath is a very holy day. And call the Sabbath a delight. I think the Sabbath is a delight. I look forward to the Sabbath coming every week so I can rest. Here's the promise. The holy of the Lord. This day is holy to the Lord. Honorable and shall honor him. Not doing your own ways. Not doing the wash. Not doing the ironing not doing the cleaning of the house, not doing the shopping. In other words, God wants us to rest. Not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure. A lot of people watch the ball game. They want to see the ball game. Nor speaking your own words. Then shall you delight yourself in the Lord. And here's the promise. I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. These are blessings that God is going to shower down upon us and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now we're going to go back two chapters to... Isaiah 56. Isaiah chapter 56. Let's look at verse 1. Here it is. Isaiah 56 in verse 1. Thus says the Lord, Keep you judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come. Our salvation is is even closer to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that does this and the son of man that lays hold on it, that keeps the Sabbath, keeps that Sabbath day from polluting it and keeps his hand from doing any evil. So God promises many, many blessings to us who keep his Sabbath day. Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 2. Let's turn there now. In Mark chapter 2. And we're looking at verse 27. Mark 2 verse 27. And he said unto them, The Sabbath, that's the seventh day, was made for man. Didn't say here for the Jew, the Hebrew, the Israelite. It's made for mankind and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man, that's Jesus Christ, is Lord also of the Sabbath. The Lord, of, he's not the Lord 
of Sunday. He's the Lord of the Sabbath day. There's two different lords. Now, Sunday uh, was created back in the Old Testament, was a holy day for Molech and for Baal, Baal, or Baal, and the other gods that were worshipped uh, by people, by Israel, worshipped some of these gods. And Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 tells us, we'll read it here, and the great dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, was who deceives the whole world. Satan has deceived the whole world on the Sabbath day. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, we have an interactive Bible study every Saturday. That's the Sabbath day at 1 o'clock at the meeting room in 1701 East Missouri, in, right here in Las Cruces. You can call us at that phone number. We meet at 1 o'clock. Bring your Bible, a notebook, and a pen. Bring your questions. We'd be glad to answer any questions you have. We'll do a Bible study on the Sabbath. There's so much more for us to tell. And in the meantime, why don't you just call us after the, after the program. Call us and ask for these two very important booklets. What kind of faith is required for salvation? And why do you observe Sunday. It gives a lot of reasons why people are observing Sunday and not the Sabbath. Uh, I challenge you to try to keep the Sabbath day and see the blessings that just pour out upon you. When you pray, your prayer goes right up to God in heaven. He hears your prayer. He'll answer your prayers. God wants you to do, keep all his commandments. He doesn't want you to keep nine commandments. He wants you to keep all ten. Jesus Christ told that young man in order to enter into eternal life. You have been life, listening to he had What to is keep Truth the commandments. with Pastor Meyer Stahl. Okay, the now Mexico until Church next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern for New Mexico of lesson, Church of God for more information, saying goodbye, my friends. Area code five seven five six five zero seven three five nine. That's five seven five six five zero seven three five nine. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings. <laughs>